Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be putting a fall look together, a very subtle but not so subtle fall look together. A lot of you guys really seem to enjoy what I was wearing or the makeup that I was wearing in my previous video when I was going over my August and September favorites. And so I decided to, since a lot of the products that I used in that look are some of my most favorite products currently, I decided that I should sit down and actually film it for you guys. I know that makeup tutorials are not all that exciting to anyone or to many people now. Um, they just don't get the same amount of views as other content, but I still really like making them. So even if it's only a few of you that are gonna be watching this video, that's fine by me, that's fine. So I'm gonna cover everything. It's like my favorite product from every single category as of right now. This stuff can change, it usually does, except for one product that has not changed, or two actually, that have not changed in a really, really long time. Um, everything else is just currently what I'm grabbing, what's in my top drawer all of the time. I know that I talk about my top drawer a lot, and that's just the drawer that I have all of my most favorite products in. Like if I really like something and I'm continuing to use it over and over and over again, if I find myself reaching for it a ton, then I just put it in my top drawer because it just makes it makes it more accessible. Like I can just quickly grab it rather than going through a drawer with a bunch of similar products, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, first things first, you guys know the brows. I've always done my brows first. I. I no particular reason other than they usually take forever and I hate having to deal with them. And so if I'm just like sitting down, getting started, that's what I start with because like I said, it just takes forever. I'm gonna be applying my Patrick Ta gel, brow gel. This is the stuff that I have been loving because look at this. It redirects your brows in literally any direction that you want it to go or that you want your brow hairs to go in and it just keeps it there. Now it does set, so you know, you can't play too much with this. Um, I like to redirect some of my brows downward a little bit, since I have some sparse, I have a few sparse areas right here and I have some sparse areas here. And so I just, I like to redirect downward so that we can fluff them up or that the brows look a little bit fluffier, you know, and not so bald in certain areas. And trust me when I say that this stuff lasts all day long, like your brows are not going anywhere. Once the stuff dries down, it's uh, yeah, your brows are, they're good, they're solid. You are done. <laughs> Next, let's move on to the brows. Now, um, for the brows, what, you, you guys probably know this, I've been using the duo, this brow duo from Anastasia Beverly Hills for months, literally months. Um, this is the medium brown brow powder duo, that's what it looks like right here. Now this stuff will last you a long, long time. A really, really long time. Um, I was using brow pencils, or I used to always only use brow pencils, um, but I just, ever since I started using the brow wax from Anastasia, I couldn't use the pencil anymore because the brow wax would not allow the brow pencil to actually leave any pigment behind. It would just kind of glide over the brow wax, which is why I purchased this brow powder, um, and this is all I've been using ever since. I really like that it does come with two different shades, a lighter shade and a darker shade, so that you can add dimension to your brows, and it's not just like a boxed one shade brow. Um, that way you know the lighter shade goes here along the front, and then it also goes along the top, and it just looks, a, it makes it look a little bit more natural, right? Just a little bit. And of course, I'm grabbing my angled brow brush from Sigma Beauty. This is the E75. I really like it because it's small, precise, gets the job done. I always start off with the deeper shade, and that's how I start to define my brow. I always do it along the bottom with a deeper shade, and then I'll mix in the lighter shade going up so that that way the brows just look a little bit more natural along the top and they don't look as like just defined, like super defined. All right, you see now that I'm pretty much done with the deeper shade, I'll go in with the lighter shade and just add that to, to the front just by flicking upward. You see how it just creates like that nice gradient from lighter to deeper or lightest to deepest. And I'll also add a little bit of this along the top. 
All right, next I'm going in with an eye primer, and this is this has been my favorite for quite some time now. I like this Juvia's Place eye primer. This is the Eye Prep Eye Prime in the shade number two because it looks like this. So not only is it an eye primer, but it completely just gives you a nice, even canvas to work with. I mean, I have natural pigment on my lids, and if I were to work with any kind of light shade, like a light brown or like a beigey tone, anything that's light, you wouldn't be able to see it on my eyes at all. So I grab a little bit of the primer with my E55 flat definer brush from Sigma Beauty. Um, I just really like it because it's flat and wide, and so it's like perfect for underneath the brow. I just clean up a little tiny bit, nothing too crazy. And then I'll drag the primer down and get it on to the lid. Then I go in with my finger and apply it that way. Can you see that? It just evens everything out. So now anything that we place on top of it will actually be able to see. All right, next, let's get started on this eye look. I'm using my Patrick Ta Major Dimension Eyeshadow Palette. I love, 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 love this eyeshadow palette so, so much, especially these cream eyeshadows. I hope that eventually, perhaps, I don't know, we'll see, um, he comes out with individuals like of these two because, uh, you know, just in case you don't want the rest of the palette, these two out of the entire palette are truly what make the palette, in my opinion. So I'm gonna take this deeper shade here. What is this even called? I think this is called Woman. Looks like this, how intense is that? Pretty intense, right? But trust me, trust me, it'll look so good on the eyes. So I always just grab it with my finger and I start off by applying it here along the center and I go up to the crease a little tiny bit. So you wanna stay right underneath where your eye creases. So for me, like right there is where it creases. So I'm gonna stay right underneath that because I want to be able to blend up without it going too far up. You know what I mean? So you don't even have to be precise with these. Like, look how crazy I look. And that's totally fine. Trust me, trust the process. Trust me, it's gonna look good. Next, I'm gonna take this little tiny Natasha Denona palette. I know you guys really liked the look that I had on in my last video, which is why I am showing you exactly what I did. I'm taking the deepest shade from this little palette. This one's the shade Seed, I believe. I'm grabbing that with my E25 blending brush from Sigma Beauty. And this is what's gonna go on top of this deeper um, cream shade here on the eyes. So just gonna pat that in place. And just slightly blend along the edges. You see that? So just being really light handed with this. I'm not going in and blending along the edges right away. First, I just want to apply the color onto the lid before doing anything like that. All right, so now that you have the deeper shade on the lid ready to go, we're gonna go back to the Patrick Ta palette, grab this like orangey brown shade, and this is what we're gonna use along the crease. So starting off along the bottom, like underneath the line, and then blending upward. And look how easily this blends too. Like, look at that. Do you see a line anymore? I don't see a line anymore. It blends out so nicely. I love these eyeshadows so, so much. So again, starting here, lower under the line, and then slowly blending upward. You see that? Like, the line is just, disappearing before our eyes and you don't really have to work that hard at it these are so easy to work with just like that and then the higher i go the lighter i go so the next shade that i'm going to grab is this really light beige shade from the palette and this is what i'm going to use in order to continue to blend upward this will give us that nice gradient from like deeper to lighter shade all the way to the brow bone. So this is what I'll use right underneath where the line ends. And then I will drag it very lightly without adding too, too much pressure. 
You want to lay off the pressure because if you're really digging up here, then you're going to create another line with the next eyeshadow and you're trying to avoid that. You're trying to just create a nice gradient up to the brow bone. So right now, like I'm barely touching my, my eye, just blending. And there you have it. Like, look at that. Look at that. I love these eyeshadows so much. All right, now we're gonna go back to the Natasha Denona Mini Glam Palette, and I'm gonna grab this really beautiful, intense gold. Look at this. Oh, so, so gorgeous. And I'm gonna take that with the finger. I love applying her shimmer shadows, her metallics, um, anything shiny with the finger because her formulas are so creamy and they just pack such a punch of pigment that whenever you do grab the shimmer shades with your finger, it just, it looks a lot more intense. It looks a lot like just more intense on the eye, which is why I like to apply it with the fingers. So grabbing that, um, this gold shade, I believe is called Golden Flush. Taking that and dragging it here along the center of the mobile lid area. So dragging it along the center and then I'm also bringing it up to the crease. All right, now after doing that, going back with my E25 blending brush from Sigma, grabbing the shade Seed once again from the Mini Glam Palette. And this will just serve to deepen the outer corner and just blend in between the shimmer and the mattes, like that. Again, being very, very light-handed when applying this onto the eye. All right, next I'm gonna take this E38 Diffused Crease Brush, and I'm going to grab the last shade from this little mini palette. This one is Fay, which is just kind of like a lighter golden, like a champagne color. And I'm just gonna tap any excess, and this is gonna go right on my brow bone. All right, let's move on to lashes. Now, this was kind of hard. It was a hard category to choose from because I do have quite a few mascaras that I really love, but the one that I've been using the most of lately is this one from Lily Lashes. This is the Triple X Mascara. <laughs> it's good. It's so, so good. I usually do just a couple of coats um, on each eye and that's like more than enough as you will see here. I don't curl my lashes, I never really have. I think at one point I tried like the spoon method, you know what I mean? Because I've, I'd seen my mom doing it. She's, I think she still does it to this day. Other than that, I don't, I don't typically curl my lashes. I just kind of work with what I have. <laughs> I really like this mascara because it does add such volume and it makes your lashes look really nice and wispy and it doesn't flake. At least I've never noticed it flaking around anywhere. And sometimes you will get it on your lid and that's okay. You just have to wait for it to dry because when you don't, like I haven't every single time, um, it just smudges and it looks worse. Whereas if you just wait for it to dry, you can wipe it off with like a brush and it's no big deal. So be patient. Don't be a Sarah and try to um, wipe it off as soon as you see it because that you will regret it. Trust me, you will regret it. <laughs> See that? So wispy, they add volume. I just, I love this mascara. Um, next, let's move on to the face before coming back to the eyes. I love to set my face before applying anything on top of it. I know I, it's probably, it's not like a revolutionary and it's not something that I'm, I'm sure other, like plenty of other people have tried before, but this is something that I have been doing a lot of lately and I really, really, really love it. So the only thing that I do is so just using your favorite setting spray before you apply foundation or apply concealer or apply anything. I just love what this does. I love the way that my makeup wears throughout the day when I do this versus when I don't. Um, it's just like you're creating a sandwich, a setting spray sandwich. I know that some people don't like to use setting sprays on the face, like on bare face, because it, some of them do have alcohol. I haven't noticed anything 
different and I've been doing this for a, a while now. Um, but yeah, if you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. But if you want to give it a try, give it a try. I highly recommend it because it just, my makeup just wears better. It just does. So going in with my Becca under eye brightening corrector, you guys knew that I was gonna, I'm sure you knew that I was gonna use this corrector as like my most favorite corrector in the corrector category. I have other correctors that I really love. However, I chose the Becca corrector because I've loved this thing for years, like years, years. And now that I know that they're keeping it, well, Becca's still closing, but Smashbox is going to be selling our beloved Becca corrector. Um, so I'm happy about that. I just really hope they don't change the formula because the formula is what makes this so unique, right? Not the fact that, not the shade, not that it's a color corrector, it's the formula for me at least. So I hope they don't change the formula, but I'm glad to see that it's, it's sticking around, you know? So just grabbing a little bit of that and neutralizing this under eye darkness here. Just very lightly, you really don't need a lot of this at all. See that? It's like, what dark circles? What are you talking about? I really love this shade too because it's one of those neutralizing color correcting shades that you can wear on its own also. With my complexion, I'm sure if you have a different complexion and you're using the medium to deep shade, it's, you're probably not gonna be able to get away with it because you would be able to see the difference. However, if you're similar to me, this would be like, kind of a one and done almost, because look at that. Look at the inner eye area. It's just nice, it's neutralized, it's brightened a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's it looks really, really good. All right, next, foundation. Another category that I had a kind of a hard time, kind of a hard time choosing um, from. This is the best skin ever from Sephora. I like it because it is super affordable. They have so many different shades and it wears really well. I really, really like this foundation. I stopped wearing it just because I was trying to get use out of my other foundations since I have a drawer full of foundations, but it's really good. It is a really, really good formula. I just apply it onto the back of my hand and I usually don't work with too much. This is the shade 26N. When in doubt, I always go with a neutral undertone. That's, I always do that. Taking my, what is this? This is the Dream Curved Kabuki from Sigma and Beauty Bird, their collaboration together. I love this brush. Like it just hugs the skin as it's applying um, the foundation. And it's a Kabuki brush, which if you've ever used um, Sigma's Kabuki brushes, like any of them, you know how good those are. Like those are such good brushes, the way that they apply foundation onto the skin without leaving like the streaks or the marks or without applying too much. It's like they really do help apply the foundation nice and evenly without over distributing it. It makes the process so much easier. So anyway, applying this, this is more of a medium I'd say like medium to full coverage foundation. You can definitely make this full coverage if you add multiple layers, like two, maybe three, if you really wanted to do that much. Um, otherwise, it's a really nice like medium coverage. And I wanna say, what's the finish on this? I wanna say it's like soft matte, but I could be wrong, so let me check. Okay, yeah, it's a natural finish foundation. So it doesn't feel dry, it doesn't feel heavy or wet or like, too much. It's very, very lightweight. I really like this foundation so much. Next, concealer. You guys know, what do I use with my Becca corrector? What have I always used with my Becca corrector and loved? The Tarte Shape Tape. I cannot, cannot leave this behind. Like it's been, uh, it's been a concealer that I've loved and that I've used and that I recommend for years, <laughs> it really has. So choosing one concealer out of my many that I really like, it was hard, but I had to go with this one since it's been with me for such a long time. Like ever since I reviewed it all those years ago, I wanna say maybe five or six years ago. I don't know, I could be wrong. I don't even know what day I'm living in, but ever since I reviewed it, it has stayed as like one of my go-to concealers of all time of all time. It's just, it's so good. I know some people really don't like it because it is, um, it's matte, it's more of a drying formula, but when I pair it with my emollient correctors, like my Becca corrector or my Beauty Pie corrector, which are, they just create this really nice hydrating barrier between the concealer and my skin. And so I'm, a, I'm able to get 
really nice full coverage without it looking too dry, too heavy underneath the eyes. Anyway, I'm using the shade 35H. It has a bit of a peachy undertone, which helps, right? It helps with dark circles. I, I remember when I first reviewed it, I was using the shade Medium, um, which I believe is more neutral. Uh, and then they kind of expanded on their shade range and they added this one to the mix. And once I, once I grabbed this one, I was like, heck yeah, man, look how much better it looks. And that's all I've been using ever since the so 35H for the win. And look at that full coverage. You don't need a lot. This is truly a concealer that will last you a while because you don't need a lot in order to get true full coverage. That is the trick with this particular concealer is that a little goes a long way. Um, before I was using like, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the upside down triangle, right? The upside down triangle trend of a few years back. That's how I was applying this. And yeah, it was like an excessive amount for absolutely no reason. So now I do very small amount. I add a little bit more if need be, but this allows for the concealer to wear better without looking cakey or without looking too matte or like too much, you know? All right, we are done there. I always set this in place, not because I feel like it really needs it because honestly the shape tape doesn't really need to be set, especially when you use a smaller amount. But I personally just don't like the shininess underneath the eyes. I feel like it just draws attention to the hollows underneath my eyes. And I just personally don't like that. So I'm gonna be taking my favorite setting powder of the moment, which is my Pat McGrath Labs Blurring Under Eye Powder in the shade medium. I, I love this stuff. I know that some of you find it a little drying and I totally understand because our under eye areas are not all the same, but mine in particular, I just, I, I never see that issue underneath my eyes ever. And uh, yeah, I really like how this looks underneath the eyes. It really does blur the under eye area for me. Um, so just taking a little bit of that, this is the Soft Blend number 50 brush from Sigma. So grabbing a little bit of that with this and then just setting this guy in place. I think just like with the Tarte Shape Tape, the trick with this one is not to overdo it. Like you, a little bit goes a long way. You don't need a ton of, um, product underneath the eye, just a little bit. We're trying to enhance. All right, next, the face. Let's continue on with the face before going on, or should I do the eyes? Let's just finish the eyes. We're gonna do that. One of the eyeliners that I have been wearing that I told you guys I was going to be obsessed with for the next few looks is this one here. This one is from Beauty Pie. It is their Ultra Color Pro Gel Eyeliner in the shade Very Pretty Plum, which boy is it. I love this shade so much. And I also love this pencil because it's very easy to blend out. So what I do with this is I run it along the lower lash line. So the waterline and the lower lash line. So I kind of, you know, apply quite a bit in between. Just like this. Trying to avoid my contact because, oh my gosh, have you ever gotten makeup on your contact? It is the most annoying thing in the world. So just running it back and forth. It looks a little crazy right now, I know, but we are going to blend it out. But look at that shade, I just oh, I love it. Um, so we are going to take a smaller, dense brush, pencil brush, right? Or maybe even this one. This is the short shader brush from Sigma Beauty. It is their E20. So I'm gonna go back into the um, Patrick Ta palette, grabbing a little bit of this, just a tiny bit of this. And this is what I'm gonna to use to blend out the lower lash line. So just dragging this back and forth. I don't know if I like this brush actually. Let me use a different one. So I'm going in with my E30 pencil brush, grabbing that same shade from the Patrick Ta palette and blending with this guy. Okay, yeah, that's a little better. All right, and there you go. You see, I just, I love this combination with this like plum shade. It deepens the look a little bit, but it adds a little pop of color and it just, it all goes really well together. I, I really like it. I love it. 
I love that shade. And then of course, finishing off the eyes with a little bit of mascara along the lower lashes here. All right, now we are going to go in with this guy right here. This is the, uh, what is this called? The Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo from Patrick Ta. This is in the shade She Sculpted, which I believe is like the one in the middle. I think he has three, maybe four. Anyway, this is the shade She Sculpted. Love this. I love this for the face. This is like, this has been like my contour and my blush contour and my blush. This is super easy to work with and super easy to blend out. It doesn't overwhelm the face, so it doesn't give you like this nasty streak of color and then you're not able to blend it out at all. Um, and then you kind of start to panic and then you never pick up a contour shade ever again in your life because that kind of happened to me when I first started doing it. Um, but anyway, grabbing this, the cream side, with my Glowish by Huda Beauty face all over bronze brush. I really like the shape of this guy. It just fits really well in there. So grabbing a little bit of this and then just popping it in place. Like I know, don't freak out. I know, I know, I know it looks a little crazy, but we're gonna apply it like this and then start blending it up and out, blending it out. See how easy these guys blend? Like, God, that man can make good makeup. And I always bring it up to the temple area just to give me like a somewhat lifted and like sun-kissed look here and here. Really, really like it. So now I'm just cleaning off the brush a little bit, just a little bit. And I use the same brush in order to apply it some of the bronzing shade, which is this one here. And this sometimes I will use as a little bit of a blush. And if, by the way, if you ever feel like you overdid it or you brought it out too far or perhaps it's down too far, you just go back in with your um, foundation brush without adding any additional foundation. I mean, I guess you could if you really wanted to, but I don't. And this just tones it down a little bit and it kind of like erases any mistakes or fixes it up. We're almost done here. I can't believe we're almost done. Um, next, this highlighter from Benefit. This is their What's Up highlighter, which I really have been gravitating toward because it is very soft, very subtle. I don't use it like straight on the face. You could if you wanted to, but I usually grab it with a brush I'm grabbing it with a, this is supposed to be a concealer brush. This is the Dream Conceal brush from Sigma and Beauty Bird. But of course, you can make up your own rules when it comes, especially when it comes to brushes. Like they don't just have to be for what they say they are, you know? So just applying it here onto the tops of the cheeks. You see that? It's like a really subtle, but not so subtle in the right lighting, you know? And it doesn't mess with any of the makeup that I already have on, you know? So that's why I like applying, especially cream highlighters, cream anything, instead of straight from this onto the face, do it with a brush. It's a lot easier that way. Now, before moving on to lips, we're gonna, we're gonna lock this in place. We're gonna set it. So once again, oh, this was the uh, Tarte Stay Spray, one of my favorite most favorite setting sprays. So just a few spritz to set everything in place. that. I really love the way this smells too. All right, last but not least, the lips. This is a combination that I've really loved lately. This is the NYX Cosmetics. What is this called? This is the Sugar Glass Lip Liner. Looks like this. Very subtle, very nude. So I line my lips with this and I also fill them in a little tiny bit. Looks like this. And I really wasn't sure which lipstick I wanted to go with today. Um, this one, is, these three are some of my favorite right now. Um, this one is the matte lipstick from Anastasia Beverly Hills in the shade Velvet, which looks, oh, yeah, looks like this. This one is in the shade Soft Touch. This one's a little bit more pink. 
Whereas this one, as you can see, it's a bit more brown. And then this one is from Patrick Ta in this shade. Oh, she's single, even though I'm not. <laughs> Very not single, <laughs> which looks like that. Hmm, which one? I think I can go with number one or number three. But I think I'm gonna do number, number one. I'm gonna do number one for today. So just finishing it off with the ABH matte lipstick. I love it. So that completes it. That This is the look, all right? And that is everything that I used in order to create this look. I really love everything that's on my face right now. So if you ask me what's your current favorite in XYZ category, I, if I mentioned it in this video, then that is probably gonna be my answer. Although I did have a hard time with the concealer and the corrector and the foundation categories because I, I, I do have multiple things or multiple products that I like in each one of those categories. But for the most part, this is what I've been doing on the eyes. This is, these are the only things that I've been wearing on the eyes, on the lashes, the brows, the lips, like, you know, that this, this, is, this is it for me. Anyway, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this type of video. I know that I've seen something like this floating around for like the last year or so where people are sitting down and going over their favorite product in each category. So hopefully it was fun for you guys to watch. Hope you guys enjoyed this video tutorial and that you found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on future videos. And also don't forget to follow me over on Instagram where I absolutely love to interact with you guys. As always, take care and I will see you all in my next video video. Mwah. Bye.